Welcome to this post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Today is Sunday, April 14th, 2024. Indiana dominated Penn State in every aspect of the game on Sunday. Joey Brincheski had four hits, two of them home runs, including a grand slam, and seven total runs batted in. Aiden Decker Petty allowed only one run in a 4.1 inning save. After the game, the media spoke with Brincheski, Decker Petty, and head coach Jeff Mercer. So, uh, so Joey, obviously four hits today, two from each side, seven RBIs. Can you just talk about what was working for you today? Yeah, um, just kind of sticking to my approach. The first couple of games, I kind of got away from it. I was uh, under the ball a lot, so uh, sticking to the, on top of the ball and the wind helped it a little bit. Got up in the air and uh, um, got those RBIs and the team win. You were the Big Ten freshman of the week last year, another strong of the week this year. What's led to that success? You know, I mean, just kind of like what I said before, just trying to help the team win, um, just doing my job, and that's not – that's not trying to do too much. Um, just kind of get the runners over on uh, when they get on base. Joey, a career game today. How good is that feel just to get that under your belt? Yeah, it's great. Um, you dream of moments like this when, when I was a kid, especially growing up in Indiana. Um, I thought about this moment, so it's really surreal. Hey, what was the plan of attack today? Obviously, uh, uh, just go at him with my best stuff. All three pitches, just continuously attack. It looked like you were mixing in like a, a slider in there. How well were you able to work that on the fastball? Uh, it runs perfectly off the sinker, especially on the outside corner. It was working real nice for me today. When you're working with a lead, how much more confidence does that give you? Oh, it's not. It's, I mean, this guy went out there and did his thing. So it was it was really easy to get on the mound and just attack him. Aiden, you were attacking a lot in 0-2 pitches, which is not something we've seen a lot from this is it something that as a pitching staff you guys have talked about differently? Uh, just put it away. I've been getting 0-2 and then kind of straggled 2-2, just really uh, getting that slider in there, putting away uh, when they're down 0-2. So their starter was coming off a really good performance where he you know, only threw 60 pitches in six innings, um, and he was kind of on that pace after one inning. What did you guys do differently starting with that second inning? A couple of things. One is I just asked the guys to step forward in the box. Heavy mix guy, changeup was good. Uh, slider was one of those where he kind of sweeps it and lands with the outside corner on the righties. And, and so the, the fastball didn't have enough life. And I say that respectfully. The fastball didn't have enough life to stay in the back of the box and make you really respect it. So just go forward in the box and, and just try to add um, <coughs> add a little bit of like regular pace to your swing. And then again, he gave us some free bases there. So now there's free bases. And, and if you give our offense free bases, I say it respectfully, we're typically, we're typically good enough to be able to kind of put good swings on them. And it really was just the, the, the free bases and then, and then the big swing from Joey there. So uh, not to stay in the back of the box and allow us to, to, to him to spin us to death or rollovers and uh, make him beat us in the zone um, on our more typical timing. And so I, I thought that that, that probably helped. Um, if you ask the kids, they would probably say it had no impact at all. So. Uh, but that was uh, I wish I'm making an adjustment to not let him just when you have a guy that sinks it and, and with a good change up and a slider a lot of times it's, you're just kind of getting the belly of it on top of the plate so you just scoot forward and take the belly out and then get him in the zone guys like that really thrive and succeed when you expand the zone and have weak contact early kind of like to your point um, and just making that adjustment quickly I was, I was really pleased you talked about it yesterday in terms of just doing the little things right with base running defense things like that what do you see in that regard today uh, I, you know, we had we had the one error that we should have t- taken care of that ball better. Uh, but besides that, we communicated well. It, when you got a freshman at second and a freshman at first, uh, it, it, you're going to have some of those things. You're going to have some miscommunication. You know, I thought later in the game we were in a shift and uh, uh, Joey didn't realize where Jason was at in the shift, and so they kind of both went for the ball. We recovered, but uh, other than that, we, we did a really good job defensively. We run the bases really well. We we practiced that so much. Uh, because everyone's everyone plays us deep and then here with the with the turf being so quick we want to go first and third we want to score from second on singles uh, and we've done a better job at that our secondary leads we've worked a ton on that i just feel like we've had too many outs at second base where we should have been safe so working on those little things and i thought we did a good job with it uh the ability to play station to station when you need to uh but also the, the lefty uh, where we picked his move we had two stolen bases that lead to two runs to be multifaceted and multidimensional, uh, to be able to do that is a, is a really big deal for us. So 
we, we did play, uh, I would say, mostly fundamental. We, we did take care of the ball. We turned up a play or two uh, and communicated well in the outfield. You, they, you saw them lose a ball in the sun with the wind. And that's always a thing in those day games uh, with the sun, where the, the way the sun sets at the stadium here. It's, it's tough to see in the outfield here. Uh, and obviously when the wind's pushing. So we did, we were fundamental. Uh, we, besides the one inning where we had, I think, three free, uh, hit by pitch and two walks besides that, and we really attacked the zone with, with really good stuff. Uh, and, and so you didn't give them additional opportunities uh, to, 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 to kind of a, to climb back in the game early uh, and, and make them earn it. And, and obviously they're good enough to earn it. Uh, but man, man, when you, like we've done in the past, when you help them through errors or not turn double plays or free bases, then they're, 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 when they get rolling downhill, they're super dangerous, as, as we've seen over the weekend. What would you say about the uh, resiliency of your team, especially with a weekend like this? Yeah, that, that was a, kind of the, the main point afterwards in the locker room was to be uh, to kind of have Friday go against you and then to be down 8 to nothing in the second inning yesterday to claw back into it and then to kind of run away with it today with uh, with with guys that, you know, Ty Rice throwing for us, but other guys that haven't thrown a ton. You know, ADP hasn't thrown a ton recently, and to have those guys – to be able to mid weekend, we changed pitch plans a little bit. Went to the elevated backdoor slider and fastball up, and then ADP's changeup, you know, was was the difference for him. And so, just the ability to continue to work while you wait, and, and then to just just keep fighting. And you're down eight to nothing, and you just have to keep showing up. And and, and I know, I, I said yesterday, I told the guys, like, you look at it in life, like the first half of your life, you make the rest of your life the best of your life. The second half's the best half. So go live, man. Go compete and go fight and just find a way to get through it and don't worry about what's happened. I think those things, uh, you know, you, you start to respond to that when you just go play. Like, let's just go find a way to win. Compete to win and, and, and just push through, push through, push through. And you just start to put yourself in situations that, that can positively impact you when you when you pout, when you mope, when you feel sorry for yourself or what could have been or should have been. You're, you're, you're not giving yourself an opportunity for success. So we didn't do that. We just kept going and, and so kudos to the kids for just showing up every but it was it's a huge deal because if you you know, you're in the second inning yesterday you get your butt kicked on Friday you're down eight uh, statistically speaking you're not in a really good position to win that series uh, but to come out on top it's just uh, quite, honestly quite the feat quite the accomplishment I can interject really quick uh, after they went down eight nothing it was 22 four the rest of the weekend the next 16 days after that so. thanks cool. I appreciate that thank you good job pitchers Coach, you mentioned yesterday you've seen a lot of guys grow up as of late. Joey B four hit seven RBIs today. Is he another example of somebody you've seen grow up recently? Yes, you know I you know and again not to harp on it, but we've had guys obviously get hurt and, and kind of were in that in between phase earlier in the year where you're you're. I know. I know. Okay, can you go see? I know. <laughs> uh, what's this? Oh. So you're you're watching you're watching those guys have to grow up and and so you kind of I've, I've mentioned it but it's like you have to go into a player development phase maybe a little bit sooner than than you would like but that's life get over it don't don't talk fit about it just get Joey out there and work with him until he can do it you know ADP just keep working with him every day his last outing was against Butler he didn't go awesome and uh, but you just keep showing work with him so yes I'm I'm very proud of the, the the guys continued commitment to work and to improve do we still have growth yes. Uh, but if you're going to pride yourself as a player development program, then when things get tough, you have to fall back on who you are, you're the pillars of your program, what you believe in. And for us, we believe in, in, in our coaching and our ability to develop. And so there's there's no time as a coaching staff, there's no time to mope or lay around or feel sorry for yourself because you got you know some guys out there you didn't anticipate. You just coach them every day. Just show yeah. up early and stay late and write a great practice plan and make them a little bit better today. And so you look at Joey, he's the, the perfect shiny example of that. Of, of you just, Joe, you're a capable player. And maybe you're in there every day a little bit sooner than we had anticipated, but you're good enough. And we're just gonna work until it shows up on the field. And then, you know, what a great, what a great uh, young man to just continue to fight and believe in himself and work and work and work and work until he is that player. And then you got something really special. And so again, he, he really, he played amazing last weekend at Maryland. He comes out today and, and has a game changing day for us. So yeah, all the compliments in the world to Joey because I am, I am very, very hard on Joey. I, incredibly hard on Joey. One, because I know he's capable. And two, because I coach the first baseman. So when you go to first base, 
your statement on me personally. And so you, you got to go out there and, and, and be good enough. So um, I, I cannot heap enough praise on Joey because I, I ride him hard. And if you ask anybody in the program who's, who's Merce the hardest on, they would all say Joey. Um, but because I believe him and he's capable and he's good enough. And, and so you have a day like today and all that work and all that hollering, and all that yelling, all the extra time. It's like, that's, that's why, that's why I keep showing up and working. And, and, uh, and I just couldn't be happier for Joey. Coach, the 22 to 4 the last 16 innings, 16 innings is a rough start to the series before that moment. What was the change of point of attack? Well, we had to get the best stuff out of our hands. So you, Ty didn't have his good stuff yesterday, or Friday, I'm sorry. And then Connor didn't have his best stuff yesterday. And so they, we've, we haven't we haven't abused them by any stretch, but they've been ridden. That starters are, have been ridden, and so you're going to have that. You're going to have a little bit of regression at times, and and so because they've carried the load, the other guys should be fresh, right? We we should have some fresh arms in there, and so you you're you're relying on those guys to be able to, to throw their best stuff. So the reality is, Drew Burst 92 to 96 yesterday, and and uh, in ADPs. 93, 95, 92, 95 today. So when you're getting your best stuff out, the room for success is a lot greater. And and, and to uh, uh, Ty Rice credit, he threw his best stuff. He was you know, 90, 92. And so we, we did, we changed the pitch plan where we, well, everything was elevated. We tried to get in more and elevated more. And we would have done the same thing with with, um, uh, with Bothell and Foley, but they didn't have their stuff. It's 89 is a lot different than 94, right? And, and so, when you're able to attack the game plan, so I, I would say a couple of things. One is once we went more to the velo and got to our spots, and then the back door slide because now you have to really now you have to really get to your front foot for a fastball. The elevated the elevated back door slider that you saw tie right, just execute time after time. That's a really that's a really tough pitch to handle, uh, and and then the change up from ADP once. Once we really shoved the fastball in, now the changeups open and they chase it a ton. So it was just the stuff. You just you, at this level, especially their offense is terrific. And as an offensive guy, I can I can respect and appreciate how good it is. Uh, but stuff stuff wins right now in college baseball. So you better throw the ball 92 to 95 or somebody better, and you got to get to your spots. And so once we were able to do that, then the game really opened up for us. You went from you. <clears throat> We're see, we were seeing a lot of times where pitchers would get 0-2, 1-2 in the past, yeah. and you'd see a lot of trying to get guys to chase on pitches well outside the zone. Yeah. You've yeah. seen a lot of three-pitch strikeouts today. Is yeah. there something intentional about that change? Yes, uh, yes and no. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's a little bit to the to the personnel. So once the once your stuff trends up, so you're looking at it, you look at the work in the weight room. It gets warmer. All those things. The, the season's such a marathon that you can continue to grow throughout it. So, if you looked at a at a at a graph of our velocities over the last, you know, month, we're gradually trending up, which you should, right? You should if your training is right and the weather gets warmer. You're a northern team, uh, so what ends up happening is you're 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 able to to have you're forcing people to make early decisions, and so now you have good stuff in the zone consistently. You force guys to make early decisions. And when a hitter has to make an early choice, he typically makes a bad choice. So you're, they weren't all strikes. They weren't all strikes. But when the fastball is 94 instead of 89, now that guy is forced to make a choice. And so you just keep pouring it on them. Just keep going at them. Um, but we got – they expanded the zone more than, than they would if we're 88 to 91. And so that would be the, the, the big difference is, like, let's just get a best stuff out of our hands, make them make early decisions. And when you do that and you are you look at it, the hitter, like he feels like he's on his heels – you know, their, their second arm yesterday kind of put us on our heels. Quick tempo between pitches, fastball in. He's 88 to 91, but it's a sinker getting it in. And now we're on our heels. They have a bunch of three pitch outs, two pitch outs. Uh, so kind of, the, kind of that same philosophy. Next up, the Hoosiers welcome Evansville to Bloomington on Tuesday at 6 p.m. See you at the BART.